Summary of Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. The book starts in Western Connecticut, where an amateur theater group called the Laurel Players has their first show, which doesn't go well. April Wheeler, who plays the lead role, gives a good performance at the beginning, but when it becomes clear that the show is a failure, she becomes shy and stiff. When the play is over, her husband Frank Wheeler goes to comfort her, but they fight over whether to meet their friends Shep and Millie Campbell for drinks. Frank hurts his hand when he hits the roof of the car after a fight on the side of the highway. Friday, April sleeps on the couch, and Saturday, Frank drinks. The next day, Frank gets up early to work on a stone path he is making in the yard. He has a terrible hangover and April won't talk to him. While his kids, Michael and Jennifer, watch, he has a hard time with the job. Frank remembers how upset his own father Earl was that he didn't seem to be good at this kind of hard work. Frank thinks Michael's foot is the root of a tree because he is carelessly sticking it into the hole he is making. Frank spanks his son, which shocks both of them. Shep Campbell and Millie Campbell drop by the Wheeler's house the next night for drinks. Usually, the two pairs enjoy being with each other, but now there is tension between them. Some rumors are spread by Millie Campbell to the group. Helen Givings, a real estate agent in the area, has a son named John who is in a mental hospital. Frank goes on and on, criticizing their community for being lazy and ignoring the tragedies going on around them. He thinks that the other people in the group will agree with him and speak up, but they all look shocked. Frank's 30th birthday is the next day. While he's at Knox Business Machines, where he works in sales promotion, he's unhappy. But he feels better after making a plan to date Maureen Grube, a secretary. Frank is shocked to find April waiting for him at home when he gets there. He's getting a birthday dinner, and she says she needs to tell him something important. April has thought of a way to move to Europe. She says Frank will be able to find his real calling there, and she will work as a secretary. She says she stopped him from finding himself when she was pregnant with Jennifer and wanted to have an abortion. April said that Frank had to give up his own happiness in order to convince her not to have an abortion. She wants to make things right with him now. At first, Frank doesn't agree with this reasoning, but in the end, he does agree that they should follow April's plan. For the next few weeks, the Wheelers get along well with each other. Frank tells Maureen at work the next day that they shouldn't sleep together again. Writing a brochure for a sales meeting is a quick way for him to solve an important problem. In the weeks that follow, the Wheelers talk about their plans for hours on end, leaving no one out, not even their kids. Frank starts to feel nervous about moving to Europe when he sees how quickly April is getting ready. She thought they were going to move to Paris because Frank told her he learned French during World War II which was not true. The Wheelers tell Helen Givings and the Campbells that they are moving over the weekend. Millie thinks that the Wheelers have become rude since the play, but Shep, who likes April, doesn't care about her worries. But when he hears about the Wheelers' plans, he tells Millie that he agrees with her about them and that their plan sounds very childish. Millie is happy, but Shep is thrilled that Frank will be able to live with April in Paris. Helen asks the Wheelers if they would be willing to meet her son John the next night. She feels embarrassed when she sees that they know John is in the hospital because of the look on their faces, but the Wheelers quickly agree to meet John. He and Helen tell Helen they are going to move to Paris. Helen is upset because she had thought they could become John's long-term friends. Frank tells Jack Ordway, his best friend at work, that he is going to move. Frank is glad that he isn't having to keep the move a secret anymore. But that afternoon, his boss calls him over. A high-level company official named Bart Pollock liked the brochure Frank wrote and wants him to make more to the same style. Later that night, April doesn't seem interested in Frank's meeting with Pollock, which makes Frank sad. Not long after that, the Wheelers fight over how Jennifer is feeling about the move that is coming up. When Frank says he's worried about how their kids will be able to adjust, April asks him if he wants to back out of the move. That's not true, Frank. April sends Michael and Jennifer to stay with the Campbells the next day because it is their first time seeing John Givings. John acts strangely and talks badly to his mother, 
but he agrees with the Wheeler's plan to leave the hopeless emptiness of suburbia and move to Paris. Even though they thought they did a good job with the visit, Frank and April are still separated and limited. Bart Pollock takes Frank to a fancy, drunk lunch at a hotel that week. Frank opens up to Pollock and tells him about how his father used to work for Knox. Folks, Pollock tells Frank that he wants to hire him to help him with a new PR project he is coming up with. In the fall, Frank tells Pollock that he is leaving the company. Pollock tells Frank that the deal is still good if he changes his mind. Later that week, April tells Frank she is pregnant, but she is very sad about it. This makes Frank very happy because he thinks it means they won't have to move to France. Then he finds a rubber needle in the closet. He knows April is going to use it to end the pregnancy. He thinks April should agree to have the baby. The Wheelers will talk about what to do about April's baby for a few weeks. Frank takes April to fancy places to show her that they can have a better life in the suburbs where he will work for Bart Pollock and make extra money. He also creates a new identity and acts like a strong, responsible man. When April still wants to have an abortion, Frank says that her desire is because of a mental disorder that was caused by her unhappy youth without parents. April changes her mind and agrees not to have an abortion. Friends of the Wheelers are told that they will not be going to Paris. Frank feels bad about telling himself that he doesn't want another child, even though he's glad he doesn't have to move to Paris. He starts having an affair with Maureen again. The Wheelers and Campbells go dancing at Vito's log cabin one night, which is a shady bar. Everyone gets drunk, and they all want to leave, but one of their cars gets stuck. April tells Frank to take Millie home while she hangs out with Shep. They have sex in the back of his car, which makes Shep very happy. After some time, Frank breaks up with Maureen by going to her house. When Maureen comes out of her room naked and dancing, he is caught off guard. Frank ends things after saying sorry over and over. April sleeps on the couch now that she slept with Shep. That Sunday, right before they go to see the givings, Frank tries to talk to her about how she's feeling. April lies and says she doesn't love Frank. Frank talks down to April as if she were mentally ill. He then admits that he has been acting neurotically too and tells April that he had an affair for a short time. April doesn't care. People who are giving gifts know that April and Frank have been fighting when they get there. John asks why they aren't going to Paris, and Frank says it's because April is pregnant. John says that's not the real reason. He thinks Frank got April pregnant because he was afraid to move. Helen says she's sorry and that they shouldn't have come. The Givings then leave. The Wheelers then get into a huge fight and Frank drinks himself to sleep. April makes Frank breakfast in the morning, listens to him talk about the meeting with Bart Pollock that day, and then lets him kiss her goodbye. This surprises Frank. April writes Frank a short note and gets ready to try to have an abortion after Frank leaves. That day, she dies in the hospital. Frank goes to New York City and lives with his older brother with Michael and Jennifer. Shep doesn't like hearing Millie make up dramatic stories about what happened to the Wheelers, but he likes having her around to help him. She tells John's doctors that he is too destructive to leave the place again, and she adopts a dog. Helen Givings is of the opinion that John was responsible for April's death. About the author. Yates was born in Yonkers, New York. He grew up in a home that was unsettled, his parents split up when he was three, and he lived in a lot of different towns and homes as a child. Yates did well as a writer in high school, but he had a rough time in the army, where he joined at age 18 during the last year of the war. Yates opted for a dangerous mission that hurt his lungs in a way that can't be fixed. He decided not to go to college because he thought a writer didn't need a regular education. But it was a choice he would always regret. He got married, had two kids, lived in Paris for a while, and then got a divorce. He lived in terrible filth after his split and spent his time drinking, getting sober, and writing. Yates also wrote two sets of short stories and six other books. Even though other writers always said nice things about his work, he never really became famous during his lifetime. 
He made money by teaching writing, even though he didn't think it could be taught, writing publicity materials for Remington Rand, and writing speeches for Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy. He died at age 66. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.